Hello there and welcome to this video. My name is Matt Petrowski and in this video I'm guessing you stop by to learn some FileMaker. So we're going to be taking a look at the layout setup dialog box and taking a look at the layout settings. Stick with me, we'll be on my desktop in just a few. All right, so welcome to my desktop here. We are going to be taking a look at FileMaker and I'm going to be showing you whatever I know about the particular topic I'm talking about today. It's layout settings, as I mentioned. So before we get started, if you found this video as a result of a YouTube search and you're interested in taking these courses in series, given that this is, what is this? This is number 11, number 12 that we're on. I'm looking at another monitor when I check out uh, over there to the side, looking to the side. You can check on, you can click on the channel icon. It's right underneath this video unless YouTube has rearranged the page. Look for the logo of this channel and then you'll be taken to my channel page and you'll be able to uh, click on the different series. There are four of them currently. Pick whichever one you want to start with and follow those in series. Also, if you'd like to follow along and you have a copy of FileMaker, then you can use the link that's in the description below and that should load the file for you. It's the same file that I'm going to be using here in this uh, video, the time tracking database. If you've been following along, we're creating a time tracking database and I'm just going through all of the different parts of FileMaker. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, and by the way, this file uses a theme from filemakerthemes.com. And if you're interested in making your database look really nice, then take a look at this. This video has been brought to you by filemakerthemes.com. It's a one-stop shop for choosing a theme to apply to your new or existing FileMaker solution. When considering your next move toward advancing the look and feel of your FileMaker solution, don't forget to visit FileMakerThemes.com. All right, so thanks a lot for checking that out. Um, I do have a part in FileMakerThemes.com. So let's take a look at our layout settings, or I'm calling them layout settings, but primarily it's our layout setup. Now the first thing I want to point out there are multiple ways to do things in FileMaker and it really boils down to what's most comfortable for you. What I did is I hit Command Shift L in order to bring that up. Otherwise, if you don't know your command keys, I just went to Manage and Layout. So we're going to take a look at the, uh, what is there, four different ways? I don't know how many different ways there are to get to it. Uh, number one is when you're working in FileMaker and you have your Manage Layouts open for any layout that you're working on, whether the layout is showing or not, if you simply double click on the layout name, your layout setup will come up for that layout. So even though I'm looking at this layout right now called Layout Time tied to a table occurrence called Layout Time, I can click on this layout or double click and I will get the layout set up for a completely separate layout. So that's an important thing to recognize. You always need to know that you are looking at the right layout setup if you're expecting that the layout you're working on is the one you have in front of you. Now, if you don't use the layout, the Manage Layouts dialog box, there is this right here. You can click on the pencil icon. That will bring up the layout setup, same thing. And then likewise, up in the menus, we always have the menu option where we can go to layout setup right here. And that will bring it up again. And here is number four. So you now know all four, which is right click. If you right click, actually, we need to click on the layout part itself. We have the layout setup right here when we right click and we're able to bring that up. All right, so now that we've covered all of the four ways that I know of, if there's another way that you're aware of, put it in the comments below. Let's go through the settings that we have in this dialog box. Now, I may have done this in the user environment, but not specifically as it relates to layout design and when you want your layout to look really nice in FileMaker. Now, there was an old uh, feature in FileMaker. In fact, FileMaker 16 that is my most favorite release. It's the copy that I'm working with right now and moving forward, it's something that allows us a, a, a much greater degree of control over the window. We, In fact, we have full control over the window. And what I mean by that is this status area above, when we're in browse mode, if I use the, uh, the keyboard command, and let's see, I believe it's going to be under the view menu. So let me zoom out and see if, what, if it, that's what it is. 
Yep, there it is. It flashed for me right there. Hiding and showing that status bar is a really key benefit when you're going to take complete control over the layout. So that's going to be under the view and there it was right there. I'm not as familiar with the uh, menu commands because I use the keyboard shortcuts, but there it is, status bar, command option S here on the Macintosh. On Windows, you'll have a different key command. Now, the old holdover that I'm talking about in FileMaker was down at the bottom here. If you're using any version prior to FileMaker 16, I believe, I don't think this was in FileMaker 15. I always get so confused. I've been working with it since FileMaker 2. But the bar down at the bottom has been taken away. And likewise, in List View in particular, there is a little black bar on the side. Now, if you still have, if you have an older copy of FileMaker and that black bar is still there, that is controlled in the layout setup. So as I right click here again and bring up the layout setup and we scroll up to see that, the option right here is this one, show current record indicator in list view. So with this checked and I go back into browse mode here in list view and I say, go ahead, save those, we get this little black bar. So if you've been working with FileMaker for any length of time or you're working on an older FileMaker database and this is what it looks like, my suggestion is, unless you like this feature, which we have no control, we can't control the color, we can't control how many pixels wide it is, we have no control over the window display of this little feature. It's from FileMaker and an era bygone. Turn it off. So I, in every database that I have, even any new database, and I didn't want to paste that right there, I wanted to right click and get my layout set up back. I do not turn that on. Now feature number two that we have today is this delineate fields on the current record only. Now I also turn this one off unless you know that you like this feature. And what it is, is when we are in browse mode here, we can see that currently with the record indicator showing and the fact that this record is selected, this field is indicated because it is delineated. That's what that means right there. So in order for me to see the field on this record, when I select, I now have this setting as well. Now basically what we have is a redundant feature here. We're getting the indication that we have the bar on the side because file that's the old feature from FileMaker and we're delineating the fields. I do not like this because I like to have full control over the display. I don't like something where FileMaker takes over and I don't get to specifically say what I want in terms of the design of my layout. So the solution for me, as we go back to that layout setup, is to turn off the record indicator and turn off the delineate fields on current record only. So those two options with regards to what FileMaker says it should do in terms of display, we are now going to take control ourselves and I will show you how we will do that. I'll go into browse mode and we now have the field being shown on every uh, record, but of course we get to control what the field looks like. So if I didn't want this field to have all of these settings, I would make it basically a transparent field. And here, because I have a theme installed from filemakerthemes.com, I can select this field and in FileMaker themes, every theme, every single object has a transparent option. So with this transparent field, I can set it so that I don't see it on every record when I'm in uh, browse mode. So there we go, we're getting a little bit closer to what I would like. Now, if I want to indicate what the current record is, we do have on one part in particular, it's the body part, if we double click that, and we bring up the part definition for that, we have the ability to have these two options of use an alternate row state and use an active row state. Now the trick here is if you want the active row state to show something, you have to style that in the inspector. So with the body part selected, I have three different states. We can see them right here, primary, alternate, and active. Now when I select each of these, you'll notice that it's the same for each of them. Well, actually the active is showing a, uh, a little bar indicator, but if I change this color for this active to the active state, 
Now that won't work with my little trick right here where I'm obscuring part of what's under this field. So you do have to strike a balance between uh, what you're doing in terms of tricks with objects on the layout and the colors that you use. But if we go into browse mode, we can now see that we have an indication of whatever the active record is. So when it's selected, I have full control over that indication. Now if I don't want the part itself to be indicated, I can do anything with uh, with regards to uh, using layout tricks where, say for example, I could use an indicator. Let's try this one. This is a good uh, a way. Remember that black bar? Let's go ahead and take a look at that, our layout setup. So FileMaker has show current record indicator and list view. We turn that off because FileMaker only has black. But let's say you would like to use that indicator. Well, let's go and set up our options. We'll double click on our body here and I will not use the, uh, there's two ways I could turn this off. I could turn it off right here or I can go back and style it differently. I'll go ahead and do that uh, since my body is selected. Um, I will do this. I will copy my color here. It's the best way to copy colors when you want to go from one state to another state. I'll select my active and I'll put that back to that color. Of course, I could have also done this, revert changes to style because I made changes. So that puts it back to its original state. But what if I want that color to display on the body for an active record and I want it just on the side? Well, remember, I've already expressed this in a previous lesson. All layout parts have settings that you can use just like you do on layout objects. So if I have a field and that field can have any of these settings for their border values, the same can be used for a layout part. So we don't like FileMaker's black bar, but we do like the fact that we can turn on a bar, but we're going to do it for the active state. So we select active state. I turn on just the sidebar. I set it to however thick I want. Let's say I want it to be as thick as seven points and I can choose whatever color I like. So I like a nice red color. That's going to work for me because when I go into browse mode now, I've basically replicated what FileMaker had as an option on the layout setup, but I now have full control. So just remember that on a layout part, you can uh, style anything. If you want it over on the right hand side instead of the left hand side, you can certainly do that. So as long as you remember that that setting that FileMaker has, if you want more control, turn that setting off. So now let's take a look at some of our other settings that we have right here. There's one in particular that's going to be really important. Um, this also is an old setting, this show field frames when the record is active. This again is something where you do not have control. These, these three options, I sort of consider them old school FileMaker and I wish that they would sort of actually hide them and make them go away because in modern day, uh, design in FileMaker, we really don't need them. These were the features that FileMaker had when they did not give users full control, but now we have full control for indicating all of these things. So these, fe uh, these field frames, these are just going to be, when I select in a field, those field frames, uh, I don't even know why it's not showing. It used to be that with the classic theme, they would be black. In fact, I haven't even turned these on in so long that I don't even know what they effect in terms of whether or not, well, this is probably has um, the, because the borders on this particular object are zero, I might have to put the in focus turned on, although the in focus would still show. I'll have to play with that one. Quite honestly, I have not used that one in so long that current day, I don't know what type of benefit, if any, you would get from even turning this on. Something to play with. Now this one, so those three, they're almost always turned off for me. And then I take control. That's pretty obvious now. But this one feature right here, show record, or save record changes automatically. This is something that if you're a new FileMaker learner, this is not something that you're typically going to turn off because this deals with FileMaker's transactions. So as a new FileMaker learner, if you ever hear the word about transactions, this is the one setting and it's on a layout by layout basis that controls whether or not data is saved to the file when it's hosted via FileMaker server. So if I uncheck this and I click OK, what this means is it turns FileMaker into a, um, into a mode where it acts more like a web page. So with a web page, when you load that web page, 
If you type in information into the form, so if I change this value from our recent videos to this is my description, what happens is until uh, FileMaker gets the instruction to commit this record, it's basically all of the data is sitting here on my copy of FileMaker. So when it gets the instruction to commit, normally that checkbox, when it's checked, FileMaker just sends it to the file on FileMaker server and it gets saved. FileMaker takes care of all of this for you. But that's not necessarily what you want in some situations. In some situations, you want to check and make sure, okay, is this the right data in the right field? Does this field have any data or not? These are all of the steps called validation. And you'll notice that when I click outside of this, if you are following along and you stopped the video and you checked the box as well, you get this dialog box that says, FileMaker Pro, do you want to save the changes to this record? So this is the same thing as clicking the submit button on a web page where the data only exists on the web page and has not been sent to the server. So nothing has been sent from this file and saved into the file until I click save. Now the problem is this dialog box, you cannot change it. You have no control over FileMaker's dialog boxes, but you can, however, capture the fact that data is going to be saved to this record before it happens. And you're going to have to do that with a script trigger. So this is content for a completely separate video talking about FileMaker transactions. It's an advanced topic. Um, if you know, if you don't know that you need it, or unless you know that you do need it, just leave it checked. That's my best advice right here. If you know that you need transaction supports, you've talked about it, you've heard about it before, Todd Geist has a lot of good information, and you want to preempt that dialog box, then you're going to need to study up on transactions. So typically, with most of your FileMaker systems, you are going to almost always have that checked, and you will rarely uncheck that. Now the rest of this is pretty obvious. Um, the layout name, I don't need to describe that one. Include in layout menus is the same option right here, this checkbox, as going into manage and layouts. And when we see those, the checkbox that we have right here. Now I don't go into the layout setup dialog in order to control that. I simply just select everything that I might want, do bulk operations, uncheck them all, and the only layout I want users to see is this one, and maybe this one and this one. And those checkboxes are now going to control when in browse mode with the status area found. Those are the only layouts that are going to be seen. So it would be the same thing as if I had just right clicked here on the layout setup and then took the time to check this box and say no longer include this one, which means looking over here now means that it should uncheck that, but I believe I need to go into browse mode. And it did uncheck that, so it is now no longer visible or not going to be visible here. But of course, if you are hiding the status area in your solution and taking over full control over FileMaker, changing the menus and whatever, then what is selected here really doesn't even uh, matter in terms of the, the UI, in terms of display. Now, access is a completely separate issue. If you're going to block access to a given layout, that is all controlled Remember, within FileMaker's Manage Security, and it is your privilege set, as I use detailed setup, your privilege sets are going to be where you're going to have final and absolute control over who can access a given layout. And if we did that now in this video, you would see that it, FileMaker gives us, gives us a very ugly layout. We'll have to do that in an upcoming lesson where we set a layout to a given privilege set that has no access, look at what happens when you end up on that layout and address it from a scripting standpoint. And you may have to remind me to do that. All right, what else do we have that we need to cover here in our layout setup so that we know? Of course, show records from, this is simply associating the view of your layout to a given table occurrence knowing that your table occurrence is your perspective or that layout's perspective of what it can see in terms of the data given what it's connected to. It really is the simplest thing uh, to understand in FileMaker is it's very confusing to get into a complex graph and try to make sense of it if you don't understand that at a fundamental level, simply the layout that you're looking at 
is tied to a table occurrence, and that table occurrence can only see data based on its perspective. In the world of FileMaker, we call that context. The context of this current layout is that uh, when I'm here, I can see um, a stop time according to this relationship. I can see the globals table. I can see the notes table, and it's all according to the relationships. And if you really just think about it in that perspective, from that uh, approach, FileMaker becomes a little bit more simple. The graph isn't as confusing because you know you just go to the layout, see what the layout is tied to, and then look at what it can see from the standpoint of data, and then build out what you need. Uh, the only other things that I haven't covered here on the general tab is the menu set. So the way that this works is that each layout can load its own menu. So as you move through your FileMaker solution, each layout can have a completely different menu. Now that becomes burdensome in order to manage if you were to do it that way. I suggest creating usually just one menu set and then modifying the menu set itself based on where the user is for the layout. It's a lot more of a hassle to create multiple menu sets and then set those menu sets to be different for each layout. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, we would have to walk through the process of managing custom menus, setting up a custom menu, only one for the application, and then seeing that you can change the menu items that show based on the layout that you go to, which is a different approach than creating a completely new menu or duplicating a menu and then assigning that new menu to different layouts. And that, again, we'll have to cover in another video, but it's something that you need to know about. So honestly, in my development, I rarely, I can't even recall a time where I have set a different menu for a different layout. That's just not the approach I take. Although in FileMaker's sample files, you will find that to be the case. Now I might for a startup a window or for a dedicated subsection where maybe the, the menu becomes drastically different, meaning the number of menu items reduces down to like maybe there's only two or three that I want users to have access to. That's when I would change the menu set on a layout by layout basis. Otherwise, for the most part, I just set it to whatever the file default is. Now the file default, there's only two places to change menu items. The first is in the file options. We saw this earlier on. So we go to manage, or actually we go to the file menu, we go to file options. Uh, excuse me, sorry. Uh, it's in manage menu, uh, menu set. So here in the, where am I, um, containers, because there they are, custom menus. This is the first place you control the default menu set for the file in the menus, and that's right here. The default for this file is standard menus. If I had a menu set called application menus that I had created, that's what I would set right here, and then that would apply to all layouts unless the layout setup says otherwise and says, no, I want to use this alternate menu, and that's my preferred method. So hopefully that was... Uh, some clarification there. All right, um, let's go to layout setup back in here. And finally, enable quick find. Enable quick find, you get to turn this on or off on a per layout basis. I have never turned this off, to be honest. I can't remember a time where I've turned off quick find because typically I'm either hiding the status bar where quick find is exposed so where is quick find? Just for those of you that are new FileMaker learners and you don't know, this is quick find right here in the menu bar. Always remember that the menu bar in FileMaker can be changed by a user. So if I right click on this, and this is on a per client uh, basis, meaning you don't have control over this whole area up at the top in terms of how it looks. Users have control. So if you have FileMaker's status area exposed, Hopefully a user is not changing that, but all I have to do is right click and choose customize toolbar. And if I take that off, quick find is now not on my status bar. So if I accidentally did that and I can't find it as a user and you have to go through troubleshooting and determine, well, click in the search area up in the top and the user comes back, well, I don't have a search area. Well, you have to know that they changed their status area and you didn't have programmatic control over that within FileMaker. Your only programmatic control is to just not show it at all and then use a field in your user interface 
that will run a script that executes quick find. And in that regard, you would basically want to make sure that enable quick find is turned on. So again, I've never turned it off. The way that I would disable access to quick find would be I would do it in browse mode. You just would not have the status area. That's how I would do that. And of course, when we customize our toolbar here on the Macintosh, and I think it works the same on Windows, if we want to reset, we just drag the whole bar up and that resets to the default. But otherwise, if a user likes to search right next to uh, a search in front of the um, find. In fact, typically what I do is, um, that is what I do. That might be a good tip for those of you that are on Windows. One of the, th or on Macintosh, uh, and I think this again works on Windows. One of the things that I do is when I'm searching with FileMaker, I associate all the key commands. And so I s typically do this. I take everything out here and I put my uh, debugging controls or my database controls, I tend to use those. Where is that one? Um, flexible space, there we go, debugger. So when I'm working in FileMaker, I want the debugger, I want the data viewer, uh, manage database, um, there it is, manage right there. And then I don't know if that's flexible, but I take flexible space. This is typically how I work as a developer in FileMaker. So when I'm in browse mode, what's really convenient is a lot of the times I need to test what quick find is going to pull up and we'll get, we'll do a video about quick find and how I uh, approach this. But this is my developer mode of FileMaker where I do want the page flipper. The page flipper is really nice because um, you can flip through the records. Although I do use control uh, the control up arrow and down arrow, which I'm using right now to move through records. It's a quick way. But this is really nice because you can invert your found set. So if I did a search in this particular field, remember the, what I told you about searching, the easiest thing in FileMaker is if I wanted to search this field for this specific string, all I have to do is right click and I have this option of find matching records. But if I wanted to find just the word of description, I double click the word description and then choose that same option of find matching records. So this will find all of my matching records. But if I want the, if I knew that I wanted every record that did not include the word description, I would do this search for description and then simply click right here to flip the found set. So as a developer, it makes it much easier. And of course, I'm always going to use the quick find to test what quick find will find as a result. For example, if I'm designing my database and I don't, I want to be able to search for user names, but for some reason I forgot that a given field was included in quick find and I put in like a number of four, five, six, and that happens to end up matching an address and that's not my intention for quick find. That's why I need to have it here in order to use it. So sticking it up front and center while I'm developing, really helpful. And of course, these are self-explanatory. I'm able to bring the debugger up, close it, data viewer up, data viewer down. I use key commands for those as well. So I guess that applies to not specifically to layout setup, but it does help when we're working with uh, data in layout mode. All right, so layout setup. Uh, we are coming close on my 30, which is really pretty good. This is at a Nice, comfortable flow here. Views, we've discussed that before. You get to control what views a layout has, whether you can see it in form view, list view, and table view. Properties is really nice on every, uh, when I am setting up tables for table view, and I rarely do that for an end user FileMaker solution. Rarely do I have solutions where I don't want where I want the users to look at it like Excel and be able to drag cells around and hide cells and things like that. If your solution does have a need, a spreadsheet-like look and feel, you're going to use table views. And I always turn these on for uh, all table views. I don't know. I wish they were on by default, but FileMaker doesn't have them on by default. Uh, custom row height. This is a setting on table view that is helpful when you have images. You can set this to a much larger value, say like 50 points if you are 60 points or even 100 points if you're looking at a lot of images in table view specifically. And of course, grids, that's all self-explanatory. All of these you can pretty much read in terms of resizing, reordering, etc. Uh, and default list view makes sense. Now, printing on our layouts, we have done, we have not talked about printing whatsoever, but there is a number of options that we have that we'll talk about in a separate video when we get to doing an output form for this database. And that may come up in the scripting session, 
but these settings for a layout work in tandem with settings that you will find in the inspector with regards to sliding objects. In order to get the ideal form that you want, and you can't always get it, you need to use the settings here along with those. Now these really only apply, these columns, come into place when you're dealing with um, wanting to create columnar data, which most of the time deals with labels, but it's not just labels. Um, you can also do this if you're doing multiple envelopes. This just all has to deal with setting up for things, for the output to work the way that you want. And of course here you can use fixed margins, etc. but we have other margin controls with regards to the page setup when it comes to printing. And finally, our area for layout setup, this is probably, um, aside from your general settings that once are set on a layout, script triggers is where you're going to be going in and out of the most after a layout has initially been set up and you've set up all of the settings. Because script triggers is where you're going to be testing things, but script triggers, we've taken a look at a few of them, and I'll need to do a video about script triggers and how to deal with what happens when you get too many script triggers, what happens is it's very easy to code a FileMaker solution that once you use too many script triggers, unanticipated things happen because script triggers fire no matter what, all the time, from the time that you turn them on. Now it would be great if FileMaker added in the future a feature where you can script use a script step that says disable script triggers and then enable script trigger triggers after a portion of script steps have run. But currently we don't have that option. So you need to remember, if you set up script triggers for however many you turn on, in this version of FileMaker 16, unless they change it in the future, they will always fire. And if you don't anticipate that they're going to consume CPU cycles or take time, if you don't short circuit those, which is what I think of them called, or um, trap them is what some developers call that. If you don't trap for the fact of whether or not you want the trigger to continue to run and bypass its execution, all script triggers will run. So that's a video for a different time. Currently we have two on the file. What happens when we enter into this layout? Well, by default, we're running a script called filter view. You can take a look at that. We also have another one that when we change the layout, when we change from a, uh, form view to a list view, we are telling FileMaker in the case of this particular tab panel, we want you to switch from one tab panel to another tab panel. Now in the UI of FileMaker, you can do a lot of these cool tricks, but remember again, all of the triggers will fire and you can get yourself in trouble. And if you're new at FileMaker and you're just now learning, the, you really can't use a whole lot of script triggers without the debugger. So if you are not using FileMaker Advanced and you are a new FileMaker learner working with just a copy of FileMaker Pro, um, I beg you to get a copy of FileMaker Advanced and get access to the script debugger and the data viewer. Because without the debugger, you can't see what type of problems your script triggers might be causing. So in FileMaker Pro, you have access to set up script triggers and you may be thinking, okay, I'll just set up this one, this one, and this one but without the debugger and seeing what happens when you uh, step through your scripts, you can cause more problems than it's worth to just turn on all kinds of script triggers. So that's the best advice that I can give you if you're working with a copy of FileMaker Pro. Get advanced if you're serious about FileMaker development. All right, so we have done a pretty thorough job of talking about all of the settings in uh, the layout setup. And I've given you the best advice that I can give you, and that is ignore this, this, and this, or turn them off on all of your layouts, and give yourself full control. Take over, um, and leave this checked right here unless you know you want transactions. Otherwise, I never check that, and if your dialog looks like this, then you pretty much have full control of over your layouts. And I've given you the tips in order to do that. Use the primary style, the alternate, and the um, uh, the active of the body part. Remember, those only uh, appear when you double click on the body part itself. They're the only ones that have alternate and active row states. You can control them here, but of course you can also control them with the styles. You will not find them on the other layout parts. So here on the header, we double click. No, op we don't get that option. They show, but they're grayed out. Uh, top navigation, again, nothing. The only thing that has them is the body. 
as far as I'm aware. Unless I'm mistaken, you can correct me below in the comments. All right, so let's switch over, see if we had any uh, questions that came in as we talked about layout setup for those of you who are watching live. And we'll switch over to our comments here and see what came in. There we go. Woo, a lot of those scrolled in there by me. Let's see what we've got. Hola, Matt. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Buenas tardes. Buenas noches. Um, good day. The series have been awesome. Thank you very much, James. Um, we're coming up on the scripting one, and uh, unfortunately, the scripting one may be uh, behind a paywall. Um, <laughs> but I love doing this on a daily basis, giving you, I believe the show field frames delimits uh, with the dots with the fields when the field is in focus. Yeah, it's, um, again, it's a holdover from FileMaker. It's been there since FileMaker two, three days. Um, I just turn it off. I never turn them on anymore. <laughs> Flannel. Yeah, <laughs> it is the colder season. Um, comment for me, quick find is often super slow. Um, quick find. We are going to have some lessons about finding in FileMaker and what impacts your performance. QuickFind itself is not a culprit in terms of the speed performance of your find. Typically, it's your data structure that is the culprit with regards to whether a find comes back with results quickly or whether it's slowly. There's also this thing called cross joins where FileMaker has to do what's called an ad hoc cross join when a user searches on a field that's in the from the current table and also a field that's from a related table. So this all comes into play when you're dealing with what fields are indexed what fields are searchable that are indexed versus non-indexed, and whether FileMaker has to do a cross-join in order to determine the results. And all of those types of issues can be addressed based on the data structure that you use and how you choose to store that data. You can take unstored data, you can make it stored, and you can improve the performance of your results if it's data that the users are frequently searching on. Wow, that was a mouthful. But it's all possible to solve slow search problems. Um, and quick find, the, using quick find as opposed to a normal find is really no different. There's no difference other than the fact that quick find looks at what fields can I apply quick find to, and then which of those fields are indexed. And that's going to determine your speed. There's a question right there. Thank you, for, thank you for using the queue or the word question with your semicolon. Helps me find them within the chat. How to set up a quick find on my layout without having to use the quick find provided on the status bar in browse mode? Uh, nice question, Ahmed, and we'll have to do a video on that. If you're interested right now, I have tons of videos available over at filemakermagazine.com. And uh, yeah, HBH Group mentions there is a script step, but again, I will show you some tricks that I use that is a much preferred method to using Quick Find instead of what FileMaker buzz does by default. Uh, I Again, I like full control in FileMaker. Uh, script step, the script step is Quick Find. Just look for Quick Find, uh, start to type QUI when you're in the script workspace and it'll bring up. All right, and uh, our last question for today. Question, how to block delete when a related table is not empty with a custom dialog box? So how to block the delete when a rela on a related table? Yeah, off topic. Um, for today's video, you'll have to give me more information the next time that we come up to this. But if you're talking about uh, deleting a related table and you're on a current layout, I'm going to make the assumption that you might be talking about a portal with related data in that portal and there are settings on the portal dialog that allow you to control whether a user can or cannot delete um, and that's they can hit the delete key and there's so many things that we can do with regards to deleting uh, records we can watch for a keystroke using the script trigger of on layout keystroke that if the user hits the delete we can prompt them to delete that record we can do it on portal rows there's so many different ways that we can uh, cover this in terms of scripting. But I think that's going to give us a wrap for today's video. So you've got it. Our, our outro music right there. If you are interested in being notified via YouTube, the uh, YouTube app, what have you, you can click right here and that will come up. Please check out FileMaker Themes if you're interested in nice designs for your themes. FileMaker Magazine if you want more content like this. 
And of course, the video that will be next in the series is going to come up right there. So much luck to you. And until next time, happy file making.